Welcome to this video guys. Today the aim is to teach you the basics of how to use Adobe's Premiere Pro Suite to edit a video together. These are the areas we are going to cover today. Number one, creating your very first project. First of all I've gone ahead and opened Adobe's Premiere Pro. This is version 14. Now on my desktop I've created a folder. I've copied some video files into that as you can see just there. What we're going to do is we're going to create the location of this project within that folder on the desktop. I've selected the folder, I've called it YouTube Tutorial, I've left the rest as default and I'm going to click OK. This is going to create a project file within that folder. Now this is the very basic screen you're going to see when you open Premiere Pro for the first time. From here this can look very daunting. There's a lot of options, a lot of different windows and a lot of different buttons to press. Number two, understanding the software and the project workspace. There are four main windows we are going to work from. In the bottom left hand corner you have the project and the media browser. From here we're going to import our footage. I'm going to find that footage and I'm going to import it in by dragging and dropping it into the media browser. If we look at Premiere now we'll see it's importing the files and they've appeared on the left hand side. If we double click on one of these videos we'll see a preview of it in the source window in the top left hand side. From here you can view the video and see what happens in that clip. At the bottom of the screen we have the timeline. From here this is where you'll create your project. You drag clips from the source down into the timeline. As you can see it's created a timeline with a timestamp along the top and in doing so in the top right hand side we now have the program window. The program window is the finalised video playing back from the timeline. Imagine it like this. View the source, select the shot, bring it into the timeline, view the end result in the program window. Number three, importing footage and editing a short clip together. By scrubbing backwards and forwards like this, you can find the exact shot that you want to use in the footage. I'm going to select just here. I'm going to press the I key on the keyboard. From here I'm going to select the end of the clip as well by pressing the O key and you'll see that there is a selection here within the source window. Now there's two ways of doing this. You can drag and drop from the video itself onto the timeline or you can drag the video only or the audio only. So from what I've selected I'm going to drag the video only down to the timeline. From here if we move along we can see what's been selected and we can crop it further if we want to, we can add effects. What I'm going to do is just double click to expand the video feed just here. All this does is it helps you to see what clip you have selected because as you zoom in and out of the project it becomes quite difficult to see which clip is selected. Now of course you could do this a different way. You could select the entire video, say in and out, drag this to the timeline and then select the clip that you want to use from there by pressing the C key from the tool set here, razor tool. You can click and you'll notice it puts a slice just there. If you then to select the left click and delete it and then delete the space next to it, you've then got rid of that previous clip. We start with the lorry going past. I want it to end just there. Press the C key. It's the razor tool, which is C for cut here. Cut, and I'm going to delete the rest of the clip by clicking on it and pressing delete. And there we go. So there's two ways of doing this. Let's come down to the media browser here and double click on the videos to see which one you want to use. I'm going to press I to start. You can use spacebar for the video clip to play at normal speed. And then you can press O again when you're finished for the clips to be selected. So you can see this is the selected piece just here. Again, I'm going to drag just the video down to the timeline. From here, if I move along, you'll see the video now changes from the original lorry clip to the Union Jack blowing in the wind. Again, if I find another clip that I want to use, in, out. I'm going to drag the video only to the timeline. Now we go from the Union Jack shot to two people cycling. Number four, adding transitions between cuts. When switching between the two clips, you can add a transition to make it smoother. I'm going to show you how to do that. 
When you hover between the two clips, you can right click and apply a default transition. And what that will do is it will switch between the two clips in a faded way, as you can see there. What you could also do is if you were to drag the clip in to shorten it, right click on either of them, they will fade in and fade out. A lot of this is drag and drop. So if I play that now, you'll see that it fades out and fades back in again. Let's look at another form of transition. Along the top of the screen here, there's a button called Effects. If we click that, you'll notice on the right hand side you have an Effects pane or tab open. Click on the video transitions, come down to one of the ones that you want to use. I'm going to use Iris. I'm going to use the Iris round. Click and drag it down to your timeline and you can see if you hover over your clips you can tell it where to position that particular transition. I'm going to put it 50-50 just there. I'm going to click back on editing at the top again and it goes back to the usual workspace that we were looking at before. Now you may notice on the timeline where we've added this iris you can see there's a red section on the timeline itself. This is because the software needs to render the effect to work properly and smoothly for you. You can do this by literally hitting enter on the keyboard. You'll see at the top there it is rendering the preview and then the video starts to play. What you can do is you can skip along right to where your iris or transition is and have a look at that. When we press play, we should see a nice smooth transition between the Union Jack flag and the two cyclists. Number five, adding audio to the timeline. I've just copied a file into the iPhone folder on the desktop where the project files and the videos are stored. I'm going to drag that again into this media browser on the left hand side in Premiere. We can select a section of the audio, so starting from here perhaps, ending at the end just there. We can drag the audio then down to the timeline underneath the video and audio that are currently there. If we double click on that we can expand it and reduce or increase the volume. And then when we click play we should be able to hear that on top of the video itself. If I just cut and remove the rest of that audio and right click on it and apply the default transition, what this does is it fades itself out. The same applies for if you right click on the last clip in the sequence. If I then drag these along, it prolongs the length of time to do that. Press spacebar, you'll see it will slowly fade and the audio too. And number six, we're going to export our very first project. So let's say we are happy with this clip and we wish to export it. What we do is we go to File, Export, Media. This brings up the Export Settings window. From here, we need to ensure that the format is either H.264 or H.265, which is HEVC. It's a high compression video format. I'm going to use H.264. I'm going to come down to the output name and click on it. I'm going to tell it where to save. So within the iPhone 11 Pro Max folder, test footage for YouTube tutorial. Okay, and click save. Come down this little pane here, and I'm going to select on the target bit rate. Now this is dependent on how your footage was originally filmed. If you're uploading this to somewhere like Facebook or YouTube, then their system will then re-encode the video down to a lot lower than the original format. So I'm going to export this to a higher value than it's currently set to. I'm going to set it to 25. Now remember this footage was filmed at about 45 megabits per second. So I'm reducing that quality down quite a lot. At the bottom of the screen you can see the estimated file size just here and it's going to be 65 megabytes. I'm going to click export. You'll now see the progress bar pop up and depending on how fast your computer is, it'll depend on how long it takes to do this in code. This is rendering in real time, it's not sped up. Okay. This then returns you back to the project and you can then view your video that's been exported in the location you saved it to. This is the raw footage encoded by Premiere that you would then upload to YouTube and Facebook. 
excellent. That's come out just the way I wanted it to. As you can see, I've recorded at 30 frames per second and all of these clips are 4K. One of them, however, is actually recorded at 1080p at 240 frames per second. Now the benefit of recording at a high frame rate is that you can slow the footage down. I'm going to find the clip that I want to use and slow it down for you to show you what I mean. Here we go, let's use this section just here. In here and out just there. I'm going to drag this to the timeline. Now if I right click on this file and go up to speed and duration, this box appears where we can slow or speed up the footage. I'm going to set this to 30% of the original speed and click OK. You'll see the footage is now extended along the timeline. Now if we look in the program window at the top right here, we should see these cars going a lot slower now. So that's the benefits of working with a higher frame rate. Now if we were to speed it up, you could go the other way. I want it to work at 200%. Now if we watch this back now, it should be super fast. So guys, the aim of this video was to help you to edit your very first video with Premiere Pro. We've covered the basic and essential tasks required in Premiere Pro to be able to achieve that. So I hope this video has helped you out today. Anyway, I'm going to head off now and edit this together. As always, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.